It is Tuesday, 19th March, and this is THG News Today with Mervyn Hanley. Good morning. It is a beautiful morning in my neck of the woods. I hope it's the same wherever you are. Our news, of course, this morning is sponsored by Carl and Sons on St. Martin and Ephesus on Nevis. Before we get to the news, just some housekeeping matters. If you have not already, folks, please remember to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to our channel. And also feel free to share your thoughts, comments on here about any news item I've read this morning or any other morning. We don't bite around here, so feel free to share your thoughts, okay? I just ask for you to be respectful. That's all. Now, folks, I must share with you that a number of businesses are jumping on the board on the spotlight train. So if you own a business, small or large, or no matter what it is, we are here for you to be featured on Spotlight. And it's just for $150. For more details or to join other Spotlighters, contact us via WhatsApp at 1-869-667-7443. That's 1-869-667-7443. And we will spotlight your small business, no matter what it is, from landscaping. You have a piece of land for sale and you want us to help you to get it purchased? Check us out on Spotlight right here on THG News today, no matter what it is and no matter where you are, whether you're living in the Caribbean, Europe, United States, we are here to spotlight your business for you. Now, today's Spotlight, we will feature the Door Restaurant in New York City and it's my favorite Caribbean spot in New York City. I can tell you that for sure. And I'm not just saying it because they're on Spotlight. It is the truth. So for those of you who have traveled to New York City or you're living there and you have not visited the door, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing out on. It's located in Jamaica, Queens, and they serve authentic Jamaican cuisine paired with excellent service. And they serve hundreds of people daily. But if you have to wait to be seated, believe me. It is worth the wait there at the Door Restaurant. I have been there a number of times. You can try their mouth-watering oxtail, their shrimp. They have tasty curried goat, flavored pack jerk chicken. It may not be what you're seeing on the screen, what I'm talking about, but it's there. They also have curried snapper. And if you don't like the curried snapper or if you prefer another kind of snapper, they have steamed, they have roasted snapper. You name it. And it's a place that you can take your entire family. You will have fun there at the Door Restaurant in New York City there in Queens. There is so much more on the menu. And guess what? The Door has 130 people on staff. Okay? This restaurant. 130 employees that work at the Door. And that's an interesting figure. Yeah? <laughs> Just in case you don't feel like moving... You can order via Uber Eats. That's the Door Restaurant. Thank you so much for being a part of Spotlight today. With that said, let's begin with our news. And we begin this morning with news out of Jamaica. Jamaica recorded 31 murders last week, according to the latest statistics published on Sunday. The country's murder toll now stands at 223 as at March 16th, up from 192 a week prior. At March 16th last year, the country recorded 252 murders. This represents 29 less killings during the period under review in 2024. While the country recorded the largest weekly jump in murders, 31, since the start of the year, homicides remained down 12% when compared to the corresponding period in 2023. I guess they're saying that's some kind of big accomplishment. I don't know. Yes, it's good it's going down, but I mean, still, you have 31 murders. The year just started. In one area in St. Catherine, five of those murders occurred in less than 24 hours in the Central Village community, where two homes were firebombed in separate incidents, resulting in the deaths of five residents. My goodness. And guess what? Five residents, right? Three women and an infant were numbered among the deceased jamaica i don't want, i don't know what to say any more about all these crimes i i just don't but we are speaking about unrestricted free movement of caricom nationals where where to go where let's move on customs revenues in antigua and barbuda grew by 13 million dollars in the first two months of the year reflecting the positive growth experienced in the national economy, according to the uh, Comptroller of Customs, Raju Badu, and according to Point Express, who, re who first reported on this. 
The Comptroller revealed that revenue for January and February 2024 increased by 21.7% compared to the same period last year. Revenues up to the end of February, listen to this, the revenues up to the end of February, that's two months, January, February, $78.4 million dollars compared to $64.3 million for the same period in 2023, a difference of $13.6 million. When asked about the impact of the rise in ABSD, that's a tax there on collections, that's a tax there in Antigua, Badu stated that the impact had been minimal as the increase is reflected across the board, affecting every category of collections for the division, including import duty, revenue, recovery charge, consumption tax, and ABSD. He further revealed that collections from ABSD increased from 22 million in 2023 to 25.98 million in 2024, marking an increase of 3.59 million or 18%. The Comptroller attributed the increases in collection to the robust economy currently experienced by Antigua and Barbuda, a growth confirmed by external agencies such as the International Monetary Fund, that's IMF, and the ECCB, Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. He indicated that the prognosis for the remainder of the years looks quite positive, with March collections up to the 14th of the month, reflecting approximately $4 million more than was collected by that time in March 2023. Despite the ABSD rate increasing from 15 to 17 percent, the Comptroller noted that all other categories of collections are up, including ABSD. This is unbelievable. Wow. So by the time the year ends, the government coffers from this ABSD, and this has nothing to do with CBI revenues, mind you. So let's forget about the CBI for a second. You're looking at ooh, five, six hundred million dollars getting up there to a billion dollars. Well, maybe not a billion dollars this year, but if this continues the trend in a year or years to come. And so hopefully with all this revenue that the, the ordinary man and woman can get more relief there in Antigua and Barbuda. And I commend the Antigua and Barbuda government for their willingness to update its people on these figures. Some governments, you have to wait for a budget speech a year later or you don't know at all. So at least in Antigua and Barbuda, in this regard, there is some level of transparency. And um, out of St. Kitts and Nevis, just a quick note on what's happening there. Yesterday, the groundbreaking for the solar-powered desalination plant that has been donated by the United Arab Emirates. Located at the Canada Industrial Estate, the plant is expected to be completed this year and will have the capacity to produce up to 76,000 gallons of water per day. Monday's ceremony was attended by members of the federal cabinet, including Prime Minister Honorable Dr. Terence Drew and Minister Responsible for Water Services, the Honorable Congress Maynard. So this I welcome because I know that in some areas, petitions and residents, they have been some complaints about the water situation. And so anything to help our people, I'm always for. So I welcome this news. That's good for the people of Sink it. And I'm sure there's more to come. Yep. And ladies and gentlemen, we now turn to Haiti. And it's not getting any better in this territory. And tomorrow morning, I want to take some time to have some commentary on Haiti. At least 12 bodies have been removed by ambulance from the affluent neighborhood of Petionville on the outskirts of the Haitian capital as tensions simmer pending the announcement of a new government. Gunmen looted homes in the mountainous communities before sunrise on Monday, forcing residents to flee as some called radio stations pleading for police. The neighborhoods had remained largely peaceful despite a surge in gang attacks across Port-au-Prince that began on February 29th. The latest attacks have raised concerns that gang violence will not end despite Prime Minister Ariel Henry announcing nearly a week ago that he would resign once a transitional presidential council is created. Gang leaders who have long sought to remove Henry have warned of a battle for Haiti and threatened the politicians who joined the transition council. Meanwhile, residents are facing worsening shortages of food and medical care. Haiti has seen years of unrest that took a sharp turn to the worst after the assassination of its president in 2021. However, the U.S. State Department has chartered flights to evacuate dozens of U.S. citizens. 
So they are there to get out their citizens, US citizens, but Haiti, they're there fighting each other. They're there now going into the neighborhoods, what we call upscale neighborhoods to kill, just to kill people. Breaking down doors, entering homes, and just shooting and killing anyone. It's just sad, heartbreaking of what's taking place there in Haiti, and I will speak about that tomorrow in a commentary. That is our news for today. Do join me again tomorrow morning, God Spear, for a similar presentation. Remember, if you have not already, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much in advance. The news, of course, is brought to you the kind compliments of Carl and Sons on St. Martin and the Faces on Nevis. I am Mervyn Hanley, and I'm wishing you a wonderful day.